So the cosinus of an angle phi equals the the um, inner product of the two vectors divided by the respective lengths. But also we have, of course, that uh, the cosinus phi is in between minus 1 and 1. So it follows that the inner product of the two vectors forming this angle phi, so the inner product of a and b divided by the respective lengths, is in between minus 1 and 1. So that we obtain the following two-sided inequality that minus the length of a times the length of b is smaller or equal than the inner product of the two vectors a and b is smaller than the length of a times the length of b. So here in fact we have a geometric proof of the following the theorem of Cauchy-Schwarz, which is an important one. So we have a geometric proof because we prove we use actually a cosinus proof. So let A and B be vectors in the Rn. Now we're gonna write it more general. So not two cases where we apply the cosinus rule. Then we have that the absolute value of the inner product of a and b is smaller or equal than the product of their lengths. So an analytic proof goes as follows. So we don't need any of the former things, so we don't need the cosinus rule. So suppose we have a number t and r. First of all, if a or b is zero, then of course the theorem of Cauchy-Schwarz holds. Here we obtain uh, zero small or equal and zero. So we may, without loss of generality, we may assume that these a and b are non-zero. So we only need to prove something, we only need to truly pr prove something when A and B are both non-zero. Well, we have, if we form an inner product of, let's say, A plus T B, T is a scalar, with itself, we know that from the properties of inner products, that it is always at least zero, and this holds for all t. So in effect, if we work out this expression on the left-hand side, then we get the inner product of a with itself plus two times t, the inner product of a and b plus t squared, the inner product of b with itself, and this is larger than zero. Well, at least zero. It could be zero. So, since uh, the inner product of B with itself, B is a non-zero vector, so the inner product with, of B with itself is larger than zero, we may divide by this product, this inner product. So basically it's the length of B squared so if we do this, then we lose the, this term here, and we get 2 times the inner product of a and b divided by the length of b squared times t, plus a constant of inner product of a with a and b divided by b with b. And this still is larger at least zero. So what we're going to do now is that we split off a, a square term. We write t plus 
AB divided by and the product of B with itself squared. So we get here this 2 times AB divided by BB times T. But now we get too much, so we should subtract something here. So we get A times A BB minus, well, the inner product of AB and B with B squared. This is all still at least zero. So this also holds for all t. So now if we are picky and choose a particular t, so suppose we take t is minus, minus the inner product of a with b divided by the inner product of b with b, then we see that the square term here cancels out become zero. So that we have, in effect, that the inner product of A with A divided by the inner product of B with B minus this term here is at least zero. So now we bring, the, we make the same numerator over here. So here we get B in a product b with b squared, so we make it here as well, so we can write in a denumerator, we write in a product of a with a times b with b minus the inner product of a with b squared divided by the inner product of b with b squared is at least zero. Now multiply, multiply both sides with this term here, so the inner product of b with b squared. So what we get is, since this is a positive number, nothing changes in the direction of the inequality. So we get the inner product of a with a times the inner product of b with b is larger than the inner product of a with b squared. Now recall that actually the inner product of a with itself is the length of a squared and the inner product of b with b is the length of b squared is larger than the inner product of a with b squared. So now take square roots on both sides and recall that the, the norms are positive. So it's just the length of a times the length of b. And if we take a square root of a number, which is the inner product of A with B, then we get the absolute value of A and B. Well, this is in short the proof, an analytic proof for the theorem of Cauchy-Schwarz in general space Rn.